What's up guys, welcome back to a new video. You joined me in the driver's seat of a Ferrari Portofino M, which is an updated, slightly more powerful version of the Portofino. I'll walk around the outside and do all that, but while it's not raining, I think it's just stopped, what we're gonna do is actually take the roof off. Will it be quick? Uh -huh. Porsche. There we go. That was pretty quick. A hard top that comes off, so so really cool. Now let's listen to the engine. Woohoo! All right, I have parked up to be able to show you a little bit more about this Portofino M. So this new updated version. Then we're going to properly, you know, give it a drive. Uh, the new updated version of the Portofino. So slightly more sporty, etc. The key is right here. As you can tell, it slots into a little spot right there. Really nice interior, actually. I mean, we've gotten completely used to seeing uh, to seeing this Ferrari interior, but for, I'm gonna actually start by showing you <coughs> the exterior. Now, have you seen that the sun's popped out all of a sudden? It was raining not long ago, which is why the car's a bit dirty. But the sun's popped out. I wanna show you a few new things on this Portofino M, so you need to have a keen eye to tell the differences. One of the differences is that the rear kind of a shelf right here has a bit more of an arched shape at the end of it. Slightly sportier, that will dig the rear in a little bit more. But also, mainly, this rear diffuser has been redesigned and now you can, as an option, of course, have it in carbon fiber like this one's got. This one has a mean spec. It's got uh, Rosso Portofino as the paint, which is a triple layer paint, which is like a 30,000 euro paint option, something like that. Um, very expensive. Portofino M also gets new rims, diamond cut rims like that. This one's got the carbon down the side skirt. New air exits here, which again are in, in carbon on this one, um, which are here to get rid of that turbulent, warm, turbulent, kind of useless and annoying air, which lies in the wheel arch when you're driving. It gets rid of that through here. Uh, and then obviously propels that all the way through this kind of aerodynamic line towards the rear of the car and even the door handle is shaped to be able to take care of the air. Uh, a few other little details such as that right here, this little air outlet, the front bumper's been slightly redesigned but like this is new in carbon on this one as well uh, and overall it's just ever so slightly been revisited. Uh, it looks so cool, I mean how classy is that, a Portofino in Portofino red really suits this car this color uh, you got obviously carbon ceramic brakes those are standard on kind of all ferraris now and that hard top roof which again i think is a big telltale sign towards the philosophy of this car because uh, hard top roofs are a lot heavier obviously than um, cloth roofs but it means that when you're cruising on the motorway or when you've got the roof up basically it's a lot more um, usable comfortable um, than, uh, than a soft top, you know, cloth roof. So it shows that, you know, they were kind of aiming for that. Now you can open the boot and this is where it reveals the dark side of a hard top, the space it uses and the weight that there is. So when the roof's down, you're gonna have quite a lot of weight because of this mechanism and because of the roof itself around rear. Um, but you've still got actually quite a bit of room in the boot because it goes quite deep. I don't know if you can see all the way down there, but it will go quite deep. And obviously when the roof's up, you've got a really nice big boot there. So it makes this car really convenient. And it's got those two rear seats, which again, seats is a big word, but they're mainly, you look, we've put our jackets here. You can use this as kind of like a second boot as you would in a 911 or anything like that. So you can put bags here, which makes this actually really convenient. This car is from Scuderia Monte Carlo, guys, the dealership in Monaco, who are so kind to always give me the opportunity to test out the latest models. So a massive thank you to them. Uh, this car is available with them if you are interested. Um, I think it looks really cool. And this spec specifically, I mean, look at that, the carbon all over the place. If you're looking kind of for a car that you can drive around in daily, look great, not worry about it being, you know, hard to drive in town, etc., but still have that Ferrari panache, this is a really good option. But anyways, let's hop in and get driving. Okay, so we hop back in, put that down here, uh, the key. And then you can see inside it is the um, the interior that we're kind of used to seeing. So we start the car back up. Whoa! Sounds cool. So you know that it's it's not like in the Roma where they've completely re 
jig to the whole interior. Um, this is kind of, yeah, similar to what it was, a lot more use of Alcantara. Um, few differences, like you've now got race mode, which you didn't before in the Portofino. Uh, God, all of a sudden, it's crazy hot. Um, we've got the touch screen here, so this is all a lot newer than you have on like the first gen, on the Californias and things like that. Um, and yeah, they've done a good job. You've got the, in, the roof buttons right here. Cup holder as well. Nice little cubby hole there, which is pretty deep with Apple CarPlay. But one of the main differences is that you've now got the passenger display, which is cool. So you can control, you can have your DJ right there. But then you can also see, you know, what mode you're in, sport mode right now. Uh, you know, your performances, your speed, your revs, all that stuff. And then we got the traditional Ferrari two screens in front. And about a million buttons on the steering wheel. The main one you want is bumpy road mode right there. That's going to get used a lot in this car. You've got these really nice comfortable seats with the air scarf as well, which is really convenient. And that will put cold air or warm air, whatever you feel like, into the back of your neck and actually has a, a really cool effect. So off we go, as you can tell, basically from your first couple of turns of the wheel in this car, it's, um, it's been set up to be driven pretty uh, daily because the steering is really nice and light. The turning circle is pretty decent. So yeah, the turning circle is pretty de decent and we're straight into traffic. Brilliant. We can put the windows up. But you can tell the visibility, you know, is really good. You've got these big wing mirrors. You see plenty out of, out of the, your rear view mirror right here. Um, and it just feels instantly set up to be used. It's a car that's going to get driven a lot. It's a car that wanted to be easy to hop into and drive. You know, if you get into, let's say, a Pista or an 812, it's super intimidating at first. Whereas this does not have that. Oh, God, it's all kicking off over here. We'll go back into sport mode. And you've got plenty of power when you need it. 620 horsepower up from 600 in the previous normal Portofino. Slightly more aggressive feeling. Rear wheel drive, so you can tell that it's kind of wanting to slip out a bit. There's obviously a lot of weight around rear with that removable hard top. But it feels pretty, pretty intuitive because you've got the uh, V8 is pretty, it's basically under here. It's put as central as possible. So, but a bit more towards the front. And then you've got that weight round back. It feels decently balanced. I mean, it's not a light car, you know, it's not a hardcore um, sports car, but for, you know, how usable, comfortable it feels as soon as you hop in. So see, no stress when you're driving around town like this. Um, it's really not that intimidating. You've got a really cool JBL sound system three-way memory seats um, obviously the latest greatest kind of technology from there and it's it feels like a good mix now where does this sit with the Portofino it is true that you've got two kind of real daily potential cars um, so it's yeah you really just need to pick which one you kind of prefer this one obviously being able to be convertible um, that is kind of the, what makes this car pretty special but the M they really tried to uh, push on that slightly more sporty side that you expect from a Ferrari. So I don't know what's going on, but we've been stuck in traffic for ages. I thought I'd spare you of that boredom and come up to more of these little, little roads where we can whack the car into race, where we discover what is actually a surprisingly fun, I say surprisingly because as we just saw driving it more in kind of traffic or whatever it may be, the car is so capable at slow speed, which often means that it lacks a bit of character and excitement when you get onto a road like this. But this Portofino M, and I guess this is exactly what this car was made to do, it brings that excitement and that character. And it is so cool. I'm pretty impressed with the way they've managed to do that. So the original Portofino is a great car but maybe slightly, slightly um, too kind of straightforward to the point and lacking of character when you get on it. And that's the problem with a lot of cars in this segment, you know, the turbo, for example, with its four wheel drive, it's almost too easy to drive quickly. 
This, with 620 horsepower, in its new race mode, where obviously the tracks are controlled, is lightened, you need to have your wits about you. Because if you come out of a corner and floor it, it's not going to hesitate to bite your head off. And that, whilst it may sound a little bit scary, I mean, as long as you're responsible, it's not a problem, actually adds excitement because you need to work with the car to be able to have a good time on a road like this. You're not letting the car do all of the work. And I find it really, really good fun. And it's loads of little tweaks, you know, the gearbox having a little bit more character, how it kind of hits you a bit in the back of the head when you're in race mode. I mean, less than I would enjoy, to be honest, because it still feels a little too perfect, the gearbox, but I mean, that's a good complaint to have. The suspension, the steering, everything feels a little bit more communicative, and that's through setup changes, it's through, you know, the new engine, the new power, it's through a bunch of little things which accumulate into just a more enjoyable experience on a road like this. Don't know if you can feel it there, but the wheel's starting to spin a little bit, and that's exactly what I was talking about. The car will not let you get away with being too silly. And that's a good thing. <laughs> that is a good thing, at least if you're someone who enjoys driving fast on roads like these, this will give you a little bit more of that excitement than other cars in the segment and the previous Portofino. Little acceleration here. Yeah, I mean, 620 horsepower, you can, uh, you can definitely feel it. But then, whenever you want to, Bosch, Auto, Comfort, and the car is perfect. It'll do exactly what you need it to do. Now we're just going to turn around here before we end up going too far away. Great backup camera. Look, that you can kind of see it full 360. I don't know how you... Oh, look at that. Awesome. Oh, sorry, we got someone. I'm having too much fun playing with all the gadgets. Really cool backup camera. He's in a 620 horsepower Ferrari geeking out about a rear view camera. Anyways, you see how much more chill it is now, the car? And it's really got these two split personalities, which is hard to do. And as I say, a lot of other, the other cars in this segment struggle to get that right. The uh, comfortable, usable version of the car, but then also keeping the excitement in it. And I think that's what the Portofino was kind of missing and what they've added with this new M version. I wasn't sure what to expect, but to be honest, I've really enjoyed driving this and it really shows how these small tweaks actually have a real effect on, on the behavior of a car and how much you kind of fall in love with it. Now, the question is, this or Aroma? Because they sit in fairly potential, uh, fairly, sorry, similar um, brackets almost of usable, you know, both Ferraris, both two plus twos. I think it's a, just a question of taste of what you're looking for. If you enjoy driving on a Sunday afternoon on a road like this with a top down, this car's perfect. You know, if you're not too fussed about all the new technology, etc., etc., and you're more fussed about the character of the car, this is what you need to go for. If you're driving it more daily and you want all the latest, greatest technology, the Roma's a great choice as well. I think together they kind of fill in two gaps and they work quite well hand in hand. So um, yeah, this has been really enjoyable, actually driving this car, getting to know it better. Um, happily surprised, and I think it is a really good logical next step forward um, and filling in a lot of the voids that the Portofino, the original Portofino, couldn't quite fill in. So really, really happy and feel very lucky to have been able to, to drive this, this new Ferrari. Right, I'm gonna find somewhere to pull over so that we can say bye guys. Look at this cool little spot we found with all uh, the graffitis behind. But anyways, that, that was my uh, quick little review of uh, the Portofino M. Really enjoyed filming that, really enjoyed driving this car. I mean, obviously a massive thank you to uh, Scuderia Monte Carlo for always inviting me for the, uh, for the newest, latest uh, Ferraris. What do you think of this car? Um, I'm interested to see in the comments what you guys think of it. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it. I think this spec is beautiful and um, yeah, it kind of surprised me as well, as I said, with that character, the slightly sportier crack character. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again very soon. Subscribe if you aren't already. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.